Hey folks, Tommy Frugal Prepper. The quick uh, heater control diagnosis on a Nissan Armada. The manufacturer date on this guy is 03 of 08, so it's an 08. I believe these are the same, like 2004 through 2012 or something. Uh, same heater control setup. So I'll show you what we got going on. So what we have is this heater control. What this does is shut the coolant flow off to the heater core uh, when it's not needed. So that when you run the air conditioning, you don't have uh, coolant circulating through there. And it opens it a certain amount depending on the temperature mix that you want. They do this instead of having like a typical blend or actuator situation. Somebody's been in this fuse box down here before. Didn't put that quite back on right. Anyway, so what we're going to do is just unplug this little connector right here. Uh, and, and the guy's already told me that he has taken this apart and messed with the gears in here. And you can do that. There's like a cross gear that goes this way. And the motor's on the bottom with the worm gear that turns the cross gear, that turns this, that turns another piece up here back and forth. And you can just rip that out, switch it over to heat for the winter and switch it back when you're in the summer when you're running AC. Um, that's perfectly acceptable. I think you can buy these on Amazon for 50 or 60 bucks. Uh, so uh, you can also replace it. Um, this has to go down here quite a ways. Uh, what I'll do rather than going back here and replacing this whole hose is we will snip the hose off and put a coupler in here because you have to get clear back in here by the transmission otherwise to get to that hose which is going to be a freaking nightmare so um, what we'll do is just verify that the control is working so these use I think a pulse width modulated signal so it's basically on so long and then it'll be reverse polarity on so long to move the motor so what we'll do first is just take a, a DC voltage measurement um, with the multimeter and see we should get some average of that modified pulse width. Um, I'm just going to front probe this because these probes fit in here just perfectly. Normally you don't want to stretch out your uh, probes. So that's fine. So we'll clip on to this. And we'll put this one on. Here. We want to make sure that we're not going to short anything. I hear somebody else coming. No, no, that's somebody across the street. Okay. So now we're ready to go in the car here. And I got my multimeter set up by the windshield. So if you can see my multimeter there, all right, and so we'll turn the ignition on. And we see we got 10.63 volts. And if I turn these heater controls both down, we go to zero volts. And then negative 10.6 volts. Back positive. Yep, back positive. Okay, so that that appears to be working. Now what we'll do is we'll just load test that circuit to make sure it can carry a load. Uh, and so to do that, I'm just going to use the test light at 10 volts. We'll be fine. Okay, so I'll just leave my probes in, and I'll go ahead and hook one of these up to 
my uh, feet end of the test light like so all right and then I'll hook the other one up to my other part of the test light which I just have this flat spot that I ground on my test light right there so that fits right there and then we'll take and prop that up there where we can see it so now we've got this propped up here where we can see it and make sure we're all still hooked up nothing shorted um, it looks good all right so let's go on in here and see what we can do and we see our test light is lit I don't know if you can see that or not. Hang on, let me zoom you back out. It's kind of hard to see on camera, I think, with the sun. And she's still lit. She's going to take a little while to turn off. There, she's off. Oh, crap. <laughs> she's lit. Right there. So yeah, she's carrying a load. I accidentally hit the wipers, and I think up is off on these. I, I don't know. Let me get my meter out. <laughs> the wipers. <laughs> uh, okay, there we go. So anyway, we need to replace this, and like I said, um, we're just gonna cut the hose and put a splice in right here. Um, let me zoom it but back out because this goes clear back here clear back in here to that uh, intake manifold now this one here to the heater core I think we can get to okay um, yeah we can get to that hose clamp just fine and pull that off but this one we're gonna have to just splice it right here is that you know that's a perfectly acceptable repair um, rather than going clear back in there it's going to save them a lot of time because to get back into that i'm looking at a couple hours labor this right now i'm into it for an hour so all right all the way back here on the heater core Thing. Okay, that's the leaves. Alright, so where this plugs into is feels like plastic. So what I'm going to try to do is get down here with my knife and slice it. But once I slice this, there's no going back. So, you know, I guess you could probably just put another coupler in here, but I think I can get this one. That's off. And this comes with a new clamp. So what I'm going to do is move this clamp up here a little closer. And we'll slide that piece in. Let me get a 10 milli.
Okay, so that is metal. It just has a uh, plastic bracket around it. Okay, that's good. So now we're basically ready to pull that off. And there's no coolant in there whatsoever, which is kind of strange. But I guess if that control isn't working, maybe it hasn't been circulating any coolant. I don't know. We'll see. So we'll go ahead and plug this new hose on. Put this hose clip back on here. Uh, let me get my better post clamp pliers. So what I'm trying to do is just get this hose clamp back on. That's perfect. Okay. And then we're going to have to do is decide where we're going to cut this at and I'm probably I'm just going to cut it like right right here up high let me just grab my side cuts There doesn't seem to be any point in here. That kind of worries me. And then we got this little guy here. This little wire holder. Let me get a thing and pull that out. this out there okay now I'm gonna leave a little extra slack in this guy and I'm gonna cut this down about here and then we'll splice them together let me find oh, what the crap did I do okay here we go so about right here. Eh, we'll go a little lower. I can always trim more off. Can't put it back on though. Okay. That would be perfect. Okay. So now I got one of my coupler kits here. This is for a three quarter hose, which is what this is. It's probably some kind of weird metric size, but close enough to three quarter. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, let's get a screwdriver and we'll tighten this down, then we'll be set.
I'm just hoping there's not something else wrong with this guy though. Because there's no coolant in here. I'm hoping that's because the control hasn't been open in a long, long time. And it just hasn't circulated any coolant through here. We're going to see. He said it's done it before and he's taken it apart and replaced some of the gears on it. So now we'll just stick this up on here. It doesn't look like it's low on coolant to me, but... Okay, there we go. And so now, we'll just plug this back in. Should have done that first. <laughs> Find the hole. Well, the hole appears to be bigger in this aftermarket part. <laughs> it's not going to stay. Oh, well. That's fine. Okay. So now I guess I'm ready to uh, start her up. See if we have any heat. Um, I mean, the coolant doesn't appear to be excessively low. Let me see here. I mean, I can see coolant down in there. Yeah, it doesn't appear to be excessively low. So we're gonna see if she circulates now. Let's, let's hope she does, so we got other problems. This has a front and a rear heater core, so I would doubt that they'd both be plugged up. Crank it all the way up to 90. We'll turn the fan all the way up. We'll hit the mold button until it comes out the vents. She's actually still pretty cold. Got a leaking exhaust manifold gasket. So what I'll do is just uh, let her heat up here for a little bit. Well, she's definitely got coolant flowing through her. I opened this up and made sure there wasn't an air pocket. 
Uh, but she gets warm inside and then cold. And then it'll get warm and then cold. Um, which, and, and when that happens, I can feel this get warmer and then colder. Alright, so she was about a gallon low on coolant. Um, I put the rest of that gallon in it, and then almost this whole gallon. That comes to about a, a gallon's worth. Um, and I took this loose and made sure that she was uh, leaking some coolant out here. So it should get most of the air out of that. So now we're going to try starting her up again and see what happens. I'm going to leave the radiator cap off for a minute here while I check it with the coolant, with the coolant with it running. Oh yeah, she come right up, has heat. Okay. Not a crap ton of heat, but well, yeah, 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 she's getting warm. Yeah. Let her heat up a little bit here and circulate. See how she does. Go ahead and kick the RPMs up on her. Let her circulate a little. Still blowing out hot air. Still blowing hot. Oh yeah. Yeah, she's good. She's good now. Okay. So, low on coolant, um, was that thing actually currently messed up? I don't know. It could have just been low on coolant was the reason it didn't have heat this particular time. Considering he's had to take it apart and push the gears and stuff in before, this will make it a more permanent fix for him. But, uh, alright, that's it. I gotta diagnose the rear lift gate on this guy. Uh, but, other than that, the heat part seems to be solved. So... Sweet. I'll top off this overflow tank here too. Make sure it's got some cooling in it. All right. So just a little bonus footage. <clears throat> um, this uh, bar here was loose. This is your lift and close bar for the tailgate. All right. And so uh, I got in here. I just I got the whole cover kind of worked loose <laughs> um, to where I could get it enough space without having to take this all out. It looks like you normally got to take this whole bottom part out, clear up to the rear seat, the whole front. But I just got it worked loose here in the back. And this bolt right here. Let me show you. So that bolt that holds this bar on was missing. So I got a new bolt and a lock washer. Put that in there. And then uh, I had to take this loose on top just to be able to get it to line up. I got that in there, I got it tightened up. So now I'll put this back together and that should fix the, the rear lift gate. Luckily it wasn't the whole motor. I could see uh, when I popped this part out, I could see it moving up and down. So the motor's good. So that's good because I used one of those a couple hundred dollars. I mean, it's an expensive part. So <clears throat> um, I think it's just this bolt, we'll see. All right, so I got all the uh, molding popped back in place here back in um, so now we're gonna test it here we go it close it beeps it's coming down a 
wax. Damn. And she opens back up. Sweet. Fix. All right, folks. I, I, I'm done with the uh, the Nissan. I'm replacing this rear wheel hub on my Buick Lucerne. I already did the other side. I figured I'd bring you guys along, but got new brakes put on her, and then the that real wheel real rear wheel hub on the other side started squawking. So I'm just I'm just doing them both because this one felt a little loose too. around here yep. since I'm driving this thing to Florida at the end of the month I figure I might as well go ahead and just replace them both I don't want to be on the road and have a wheel bearing go out. Alright, there's that. Caliper bracket's off. Alright. There we go. Okay, now I go pull out my uh, little. Uh, She's pretty rusty. I tried to clean her off and lube her up, but she just she's not loose yet, but she's making a little noise on spinning and she's spinning really free. And she should be kind of stiff when you spin her. So oh well. I'll yank her out of here. So for these you just gotta reach through here. That should be a big hole. Oh man, this hole isn't big enough. Hang on, there. So this is a different hub than the other side. It's already been replaced once, I guess. Or the batter is just really rusty compared to the other side. I don't know. We'll go ahead and pull these out. Now the other thing is you want to make sure that you unplug your wheel speed sensor back here, which I already have. But uh, yeah, I'm just gonna hammer her out. Hopefully she'll come out as easy as the other side did. The other side took about 10 whacks. She feels kind of gritty. See, feeling kind of gritty. Yeah, definitely that time. So now what I want to do is just clean up the face of this real good. Oh, let me go grab my air hose.
right there. Got my rotary file. Now I'll just go over this real light. I don't want to take off the aluminum. I just want to get rid of this corrosion. This guy real good too. This one, she's a little tight. She don't just spin. She don't just free spin. Okay. Not in there. So we go there like so. We'll take one of these. Let's uh, get her lined up a little bit there. This will just tighten that up a little. I'll get them all started and lined up, and then we'll tighten them down. Make sure they're good and tight. I gotta be careful, this is a pretty powerful impact. I don't wanna snap them off. Okay. And there we go, we got a new hub. We'll go ahead and uh, plug our wheel speed sensor back in before we forget. And I'll be crawling under here trying to plug it in with it on the ground. wheel bearings. Um, I got two front ones too for $95 on Amazon. Free shipping. <laughs> the front ones don't need done yet but I'll have them for when they do. Uh, and we'll just slide our bracket back in here. Get that 
Anyway, the, these bolts are kind of a pain to get to. My other brand, caliber bracket bolt guy. Great. The guy always has to lose his bolt. Tell you. Nope. There it is. It's right there in front of me. <coughs> okay, now we'll either reach around and get this one in the bottom. Show you guys back here if I can what's going on. Well, try to anyway. Can't really see it, can you? Falling, you're falling. You're gonna have to quit drinking. You're stumbling all over the place. All right, there you go. before I tighten the other one. And it is going. There we go. Alright, now bring it over here. So you can see what I'm doing here hopefully. Gotta put these brackets back on. Oh, that will grease on that one. Yeah, it's good enough. All right, good enough for my car. Switch my ratchet over to a 14 from a 15. <clears throat> it's one of the few spots that GM uses a 14 millimeter bolt. Because this brake caliper design is actually a Toyota design on the rear of these.
going in. Put the wheel back on. Sweet. You know I'm not going to torque it down. I'm not even going to use a torque stick. I'm just going to hammer it on there. This is my car. I can do what I want. <laughs> Make sure my spacer rings in there for this aftermarket wheel it is. Which, uh, I don't know what happened, but when I bought this car, it had one spacer ring on it. And it had a weird vibration on the highway. So I measured the, the inner diameter of the hub and the, the face of it. And uh, it was some weird size spacer ring. And I found it in a place in Lithuania. <laughs> I had to wait three weeks to get my new spacers from Lithuania. So, yeah. I bought two sets of them, so I have some extras. I think he had just got new tires somewhere. I think I'll put the tires on. Probably just threw the plastic spacers in the trash. You don't watch. You don't watch them like that. <laughs> Old sockets wired out. Don't want to stay on anymore. That's that. Gonna have to haul that stuff out of here before long. 